Hello Ron, it's lovely to speak with you today. So tell us a bit about how your career in the media industry started. Well, uh, thank you first, Hannah, for the, for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Um, well, the first eight years, I guess, of my career, I spent at daily newspapers in the American Midwest, uh, including five as a business editor. I jumped over to the business-to-business -business journal world, and I've mostly been there for the rest of the career. Um, I spent a year as a business editor of the Prague Post in the Czech Republic, then back to the States where I helped launch a couple of business journals, uh, again in the Midwest, uh, sandwiched by uh, two stints at the San Francisco Business Times where I'm at now, and I've covered biotech for uh, a little over five years now. So your current role is as the Biotech Education and China Reporter for the San Francisco Business Times. What does this involve? A lot of running around. <laughs> uh, in, in this age of journalism, uh, you know, one writes and reports for online and for the print and tweets. Um, the news never stops. What are some of the biggest trends in healthcare that you report on? I think the slow and steady march toward personalization of, of medicine, um, the technology is almost there. Uh, people in the industry, I believe, have the vision, but I'm not sure um, everyone's figured out how it pencils out yet. Um, and I'm not sure really that patients and physicians are mentally prepared for um, the power that would come from it. What has been the most interesting biotech story, in your opinion, in the past few years? Well, a couple, but the first that came to mind was Avastin. Not, not the drug itself, but the process that finished up last year with the FDA, um, with the FDA pulling its approval, uh, the conditional approval for women with metastatic uh, breast cancer. The numbers weren't there for Genentech, uh, the FDA said, and I understand the spin that the company puts on that, but what was most interesting was the response of patients, I think, and, and uh, you know, folks who um, were now possibly not going to have access to that drug and were making their voices heard, and how that became a, uh, Avastin became a political football after that, and some of the misinformation that was then thrown out there, confusing the issue by you know, folks like Glenn Beck, um, who had political aims for this rather than looking at the scientific justification. Um, you know, and they were trying to link that to Obamacare, I think. Um, also for me, um, an interesting biotech story is anything in neurosciences. Um, I have a bit of a bias there. My mother um, died of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, and the work that's being done there, though, you know, still struggling along, but especially the work in Alzheimer's is fascinating. Um, ALS is such a terrible disease, but again, it's where the patients are rising up and enrolling trials through social media and, um, and, and basically, in some cases, injecting themselves in ad hoc drug trials. I think that's, that's always an interesting story for me. You also report on China. So how important is the relationship between China and biotech companies in America? Well, I think it's most important here in the Bay Area, whereas Boston, Cambridge, I think, is a draw for European drug partnerships or collaborations. Um, it's geographically natural for Asian drug companies to look here. That, uh, that's a great draw. I, I haven't seen a lot of deals uh, in the biotech space, um, the, chi the Chinese companies, I think, are very opportunistic. And our staff here, you know, covering the wide range of industries, um, we know of a couple of projects or companies where the Chinese companies have come in and undervalued those companies. Uh, they've they've uh, bid way too low. But it is happening, and I think we saw that this week with um, – uh, BGI Shenzhen um, and its deal with Complete Genomics. And is this relationship heavily influenced by the media? Hmm. Uh, I think here at least it's influenced more by a natural call.
cultural connection. Um, Chinese nationalists come, or nationalist Chinese come to San Francisco on vacation. They buy condos here, and it's just a mm-hmm. you know hop and skip across the Pacific. And increasingly, they invest here, and increasingly, they're investing through programs like the EB-5 visa program. In what ways do you think the biotech industry will evolve in the next decade? I think the industry has learned a lot in this era of austerity, which just happens to correlate with how long I've been covering the industry. <laughs> I, I, I hope it's not me. Um, <laughs> it's learned a lot, I think, and I think, I hope that continues, um, but I also think a lot of people are concerned that the pendulum has swung so far that way toward making everything lean and mean that the dreams just aren't getting funded, that the, Z, that the VCs just aren't including um, a balance of their portfolios uh, with the big risk um, that could change the face of healthcare. care. Uh, the fear is that innovation could get lost and that uh, I think will play out over the next decade. Um, what advice would you give someone wanting to join the biotech media industry? Um, go to as many conferences, seminars, um, et cetera, before you actually go out and interview people. I mean, if, if you've got a, a couple of weeks or a month to do that, that's great. Uh, you know, if, if you're a younger person, you know, still in college or coming out of college, um, look into a degree even. Uh, you know, I, I, I flunked my first marking period of 10th grade biology. So <laughs> my route is probably not the route that people want to go. But um, I think having a, a good, solid understanding of the science helps, especially when merging the, the business side of the business. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for speaking to me today, Ron. Thank you.